Hi everybody, Captain L speaking. Welcome to training tips designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Take a seat. Let's strap in and stow the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Our briefing today will cover The auto flight speed protections. We're looking at flight envelope protections in regards to speed. Speed can generally be controlled by the thrust levers via the auto throttle system or by pitch via the elevators. In level flight, the auto throttle, if it's engaged and active, will control speed. Pitch through the elevator will control maintaining your altitude. In a climb or a descent, pitch will control speed through the elevator. And the auto throttle, again if active and engaged, will control your rate of climb or rate of descent. This will be true in VNAV or flight level change climb or descent but it's not true in vertical speed. In vertical speed, we're maintaining a specific rate of climb when we climb in VS, and the auto throttle then would control the speed. But in the normal modes we use for climb and descent, which would be VNAV or flight level change, the elevator will control speed, and the auto throttle will control your rate. So our speed, our speed protections come down to the auto throttle and or pitch through the elevator depending on what's controlling speed. We have speed protections for low speed, high speed, flap limit protection, and gear limit protection. In the uh, low speed regime uh, we have protection via pitch or thrust depending on what's controlling speed to keep us a certain margin from stalling. Uh, at the high speed regime, we're not going to exceed VMO MMO uh, by, again, pitch or thrust, depending on what's controlling speed. And we have protection for when our flaps are out for our placard flap limit speeds, and if the gear is out for the gear limit speeds. Let's take a look at the uh, virtual simulator and look at some of these flight envelope protections. We're looking at the uh, PFD specifically and speed protections. You can see that I've taken the mode control panel. The auto throttle is engaged in the speed mode. And I've taken the mode control panel and dialed the speed down to 100 knots. That's as low as it can get. Can't go any lower than that. And you'll see because the auto throttle is engaged and it is maintaining speed that there's going to be speed protection on the low side. I'm going to freeze the simulator right here to uh, talk about something. Right about here, as we approach the top of the amber band, which would be your minimum maneuvering speed band, the auto throttle would start to add power. You'd see the, uh, the trend arrow here get smaller and smaller and smaller, and the speed would stop right here. It would not be allowed to get into this minimum maneuvering band with no flaps out, uh, and get any slower than this. This is a problem with the uh, accuracy of the iFly 747-400 uh, simulator. It doesn't simulate this very well. Where it's going to stop is right above the red boxes, and that's inaccurate. It would actually stop right here at the top of the amber band, the minimum maneuvering band. Remember that when you're at the top of this, it gives you a 1.3 G maneuver to stick shaker. So normally you would see this arrow right now just about disappeared and the power would be increasing and even though we're calling for 100 knots, it's not going to give us 100 knots. It's going to stay right here at about 207. So we'll restart the simulation. You're going to see that this is a little bit inaccurate. Once we get into the amber band, we would get an airspeed low message. 
that's warning us that we're getting into a very low speed situation. Re recall when we talked about airspeed that the red boxes would indicate uh, where a stick shaker would occur. See, in this case, it's going to take us all the way to the red boxes, and then it's going to add power to keep us just above stick shaker. And that is, as I said, inaccurate. It actually would be up here and holding this speed, would not be allowed to get back in here. But you can see here's the protection. It's just at the wrong spot. It would not be here. It would be up here. So you can see it has stopped the uh, speed from decreasing further just above stick shaker. Now we're going to go to flaps 1. And you will see that when the leading edges come out, uh, in this case the uh, mid-span and the inboard would come out when you go to flaps 1. And you'll see the boxes will move down further and the amber band will move down further. And again you have protection for flaps 1. But again, it wouldn't be right here. It would be right here. So just to reiterate, we are getting the protection, but we're getting it in the wrong spot. Let's go to flaps 5. You'll see now when we go to flaps 5, and now the uh, outboard trailing edge flaps are going to extend. And the inboard... Uh, outboard section of the inboard leading edge flaps will extend as well. And again you can see the red boxes move down. You can see the amber minimum maneuvering band move down as the flaps come to five. And again we do have the protection. It's just in the wrong spot. The protection would actually be right here. You'd be up here at 169 or so. It would be just, just right at that top of that amber band. Again, we have this protection because the auto throttle is engaged. We're in altitude hold. The auto throttle is maintaining the speed. Now we'll increase the speed up to as far as it goes. The upper limit here is 399 knots. Can't go above that. We're at flaps 5. The flap 5 placard speed is 260 knots. So you're going to see, even though we're calling for 399 knots, it's not going to allow us to get there. It's going to stop at 260 knots and obey or protect us for the flap limit speed. Again, because the auto throttle is controlling speed, the auto throttle will be the mechanism to maintain the speed protection. If we were in a climb or descent, it would be pitch that would try to uh, maintain the limit speed. So in which case it would pitch higher to keep us at that limit speed of 260 knots because of the flaps. So you'll see here, even though we're calling for 399, the red boxes are at 260 because of the flap 5 limit speed. I have a tanked engine message. We'll just ignore that for now. And you can see here that the auto throttle will start powering back and will keep us at the flap, in this case, the flap 5 placard speed of just below 260. and will not exceed that limit. Hey, let's retract the flaps to flaps 1 and flaps up. And now you'll see as the flaps retract, the red boxes will go up to VMO MMO and the speed will then be allowed to increase. Again, we're calling for a speed of 399, but we're not going to get there because we have high speed protection, and that would be at VMO, MMO, again with the auto throttle engaged.
the indicated airspeed mock is accurate. The lowest it can go is 100 and the highest it can go is 399. Uh, another inaccuracy of the uh, iFly is that the altitude goes from zero and uh, in the airplane it would go up to 50,000 feet. Uh, I think in the iFly you can actually set this up to 80 some thousand feet or something like that. It goes way up there. But uh, the actual limits would be zero to 50,000 feet and you can set this above 50. I think it goes to 80 or 90 or something like that. So you'll see here, even though we're calling for 399 knots, it's not going to let us get there because VMO MMO is about 362 knots. So the auto throttle, because it's controlling speed, will power back and keep us at the limit speed. And that's what it's doing here. Now let's start to slow down. And what we'll do is show you the gear limit speed protections. You'll notice the gear extend speed and the extended speeds or the extend speed and the retract speed is 270.82. So once we get below 270, we can extend the gear. And notice we've got three speeds here. We've got an extend speed, a retract speed, and an extended speed. To retract the gear, we should be no faster than 270.82. To extend the gear, we should be no uh, faster than 270.82. And once the gear is extended, we can go to 320 or 0.82. Uh, this is an inaccuracy of the iFly 747-400 as well. You'll see that once we get below 270, we're going to lower the gear. And the red boxes, in that case, should go to 270 initially. And there they go. You can see the red boxes have come to 270. But once the gear is down, those boxes should then go up to 320. And see the gear is down now and the boxes stay at 270. They should actually go up to 320 now because the extended speed is 320. If we had something like a uh, wheel wall fire and we got the gear down and the wheel wall fire light still illuminated and we wanted to get more airflow into the wheel well for extinguishing the fire, we could then uh, take the speed and put it up to 320 knots in an attempt to uh, snuff out the fire. So a little bit of an inaccuracy here with the iFly. Uh, it'll be interesting to compare some of this with the PMDG when it comes out. and I suspect the PMDG would be a little more accurate. So you can see here we've extended the speed, uh, in this case up to 389, but it's going to keep us right at the limit, which is 270, which is actually inaccurate with the gear down. should be 320 right now. should be up here. We should be allowed to increase the speed up to 320 with the gear down. So that's another minor problem with the iFly 747-400. It's uh, amazingly accurate, but there, but I have found some things that are not do not replicate, like the airplane or the simulator. We'll raise the gear now. Once we raise the gear, you'll see the red boxes will start to move to the upside. And once the gear is up, the boxes will go to VMO, MMO. There they go. So they're all the way back up there to 362 or so. And we'll take the speed here and we'll 
bug it back down to uh, a normal speed of uh, 240. Okay, that completes our discussion of the auto flight system regarding flight envelope protections or speed protections. Let's lower the HUD and go flying. Till our next briefing, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.